10 minutes away from Blue Lights College Basketball. up in nine minutes, Blue Lights College Basketball. Eight minutes away from Blue Lights College Basketball. Lights basketball in seven minutes. Six minutes away from Blue Lights Basketball.
In five minutes, it's Blue Lights College Basketball. Lights basketball in four minutes. Stay tuned. You're three minutes away from Blue Lights Basketball. Coming up in two minutes, Blue Lights Basketball. One minute away from Blue Lights Basketball. Enjoy the game.
This is Blue Lights College Basketball on the Thoroughbred Sports Network. Thoroughbred's Basketball is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors, the official sporting goods retailer of the Thoroughbreds. Infinite Cheer and Elite Gym, the home mat of BLC Wrestling. The Blackwell Group of Keller Williams Elite Realty. Apex Baptist Church. CC's Pizza, the official pregame meal of the Thoroughbreds. Calvary Chapel, Cary. Rogers Insurance Agency, protecting your future. Pizza Hut, no one out pizzas the hut. Two Dog Digital, your company's best friend for IT services. Duke Sports Medicine, the official healthcare provider of the Thoroughbreds. New Horizons Fellowship. Arby's, we've got the meats. Pierce Group Benefits, superior benefits, personal service. Hope Community Church, Apex Campus. And CrossFit Contrivance, the official CrossFit gym of the Thoroughbreds. When you go to Florida in February, there are a few things you want to come home with. One is a suntan. The other is a set of Mickey ears. And in the case of the Thoroughbreds, a National Invitational Tournament Championship. Well, some of the players may have caught some rays, but that was all they got as they did not make it to Disney World, nor were they able to claim a victory in two games in Jacksonville over the weekend. Good evening, everyone. Glad to be coming to you from the Hope Community Church Arena back home here in Apex. Hopes for a shot at a title were dashed on Thursday night when BLC ran into a red-hot Coa Falls College squad. TFC's size up front caused the Thoroughbreds trouble from the get-go. BLC center Chris Coger was double-teamed throughout the game, forcing him to toss offensive rebounds when he could get them. Back outside, the Eagles also very active defensively, forcing BLC into 36 turnovers that often led to Tacoa Buckets and eventually to a 78-49 Tacoa Falls College win. Then blue lights fell behind early to an inspired battalion of warriors from Appalachian Bible College on Saturday afternoon and dropped a hard-fought 78-74 decision in the fifth-place game. Tonight, Coach Mario Farr knows his team can bounce back as it faces a crew they've played and beaten already this season, University Prep. We'll get his thoughts on how they can go about doing just that as the CC's Pizza pregame show continues next here on the Thoroughbreds Sports Network. Hey, what's up, Blue Lights College fans? My name is Sean Walder, and I'm the worship pastor here at Apex Baptist Church. And we just want to take a moment to say how honored we are to partner with Blue Lights College and have them on our campus practicing every single week. We're thankful for their involvement in the community and their commitment to serve as first responders. You guys are amazing, and we are so thankful for you allowing us to be a part of all that you do. You could have Papa John's. Or you could leave your family at CC's Pizza Unlimited Buffet and start a new life in Omaha, Nebraska, all for $5.99, only at CC's. Duke Orthopedics is expanding our care. We're adding more doctors, specialists, and urgent care locations with extended hours. We're making care more convenient for the most important reason of all, you. Thoroughbreds pregame is brought to you by CC's Pizza at West Park Place Shopping Center, Highway 55 in Cary. CC's Pizza, the official pregame meal of the Thoroughbreds. Well, the Thoroughbreds did not get the desired results they had hoped for in Jacksonville, Florida, coming away with two losses. And Coach Mario Farr joining me now. Uh, Coach, what were your takeaways from the two games at the NIT? Um, obviously that we still have some ways to go, some, uh, growth and, uh, uh, and a little bit of, uh, decisions that need to be made. Um, and from the tournament, uh, most off, you know, I think I decided to change the style of play, especially in that we got our bigs and stuff back. Uh, I think it's, it'd be better for us to work through the bigs, play a little more inside out, uh, slow down the pace a little bit, uh, especially for a half court set and stuff like that. 
Um, but again, the tournament was a real eye opener. Um, it was a great experience for the guys, not only you know on the basketball court but off as well. We had a great time, built a lot of chemistry. Uh, I def- definitely enjoyed the trip and love you know competing at at that level. Um, you know at the Bible and IT tournament. You know, one of the things that struck me in the first game, the Dakota Falls game, we were going up uh, against a team with more bigs than we had seen previously. That seemed to really cause us a lot of problems. Uh, was that part of the thing that uh, part of the uh, decision making that uh, went into uh, your choosing to change the, uh, the style of play? Uh, somewhat. Uh, I think. For the most part, uh, because of our inconsistencies with our guards, um, even though, you know, uh, we had to lean more to our guards because that's basically all we had to the beginning of the season. Uh, but now, like I said, since we have our bigs and everything, and like I said, you know, such inconsistencies, such up and downs with our guards, um, I know, you know, we'll get more of a high percentage shot and a more efficient shot, you know, working inside through our bigs. Um and even getting better outside shots if we go through the bigs, kicking it out, you know, when it's doubles or traps or when they uh trying to dig down some, um, which we'll be working on in practice some yesterday. So uh, you'll see some of that to this evening. The uh, Appalachian Bible game, another entertaining game. Uh, regardless of which team you were pulling for, it was a lot of fun to watch. Certainly, this is the uh, that was the best Appalachian team that we have seen in the uh, four years of competing against the Warriors, and uh, they were able to, uh, to uh, pull out the win. What do you think w- were the keys in that game uh, that kept us from uh, getting over the top? We may, we got the lead, weren't able to, to to hold on to it at the end. First, I want to just uh, my hat goes off to Coach Barton and you know what he does there there at Appalachian and his. You know, he has such um, tenure in the game and tenure, you know, as a, as a coach. Uh, I have full respect for him. He changed his whole style of play this year, especially being without bigs with his program. Um, they are very much a lot more up-tempo, shoot a lot more threes. He switched up his defenses this year. And uh, I respect it totally because I was not prepared, especially, you know, playing at their place on Tuesday, you know, and then, you know, again, at the tournament. Um, it really threw it off its guard. And they, they look like a very well-oiled machine this year, you know, with seniors and everything. So uh, my hat goes off to him. Uh, but secondly, you know, at the game, like I said, it was very competitive because uh, Barton prepared his team very well. Um, they made shots. Um, and again, you know, it was a lot of our inconsistency with our guards. Um, and, you know, like I said, we, we really should have played a lot more through our bigs, uh, which, like I said, I think from here throughout the season, that's, that's what we'll try to do. So We're facing a team that we had success with the first time around, University Prep this evening. Uh, what do you expect to see from them? They've sort of been struggling as of late. In fact, have not won a game since before uh, we played them back on January the 26th, and that resulted in a 15-point win for the Thoroughbreds. What do you expect to see out of them this evening, and uh, what's our game plan for them? Um. Well, again, I, I think it was a great competition the first time. Um, they really uh, opened their eyes in the first half last game. Um, you know, the way we had, I had to chew them out during halftime, the way we was able to compete and fight and do what we were supposed to do to get out, um, come away with the win the first game. Uh, but, again, they had a few players the first time we played play them. Well, I think one main player. Um, to where we knew how to adjust this game. And, um, uh, you know, we, we worked on, I, I saw a few little bit of different types of under, a baseline out of bounds plays uh, that we went over and um, a couple of their um, half court sets that was a little different from what we were used to before um, playing them and stuff like that. So, again, we prepared for them. Uh, all we really had was yesterday since we had such a long weekend. Uh, but we done what we can, and uh, like I said, we worked on a little bit of our change of style of play, and um, from that, I hopefully uh, it has set the tone for the rest of the season for us to be successful. All right, Coach. Uh, best of luck tonight. Thanks. Thank you.
All right, that's head coach of the Thoroughbreds, Mario Farr, back with the tip-off right after this on the Thoroughbreds Sports Network. Gear up for Back to Sport at Academy Sports and Outdoors. This is a filet of fish sandwich. This is Arby's crispy fish sandwich. And this is Arby's fish and cheddar sandwich. Ours are two for six. There's his oops, there it goes, who cares anyway? Arby's, we have the meat. And good evening, everybody. Welcome into the Hope Community Church Arena. I'm Mike Davis. Thanks for joining us once again. And in just a moment, uh, Dan Fury, who you heard on the public address, will be joining us. And alongside our technical director, Roderick Warren, Sean Cooper will be joining us on camera later on this evening. We're getting set for basketball here at Hope Community Church Arena this evening. The rematch from an earlier game in which the Thoroughbreds were victorious over the University Prep Panthers. And uh, that score uh, back on January the 26th, uh, 88 to 71. Our officials for tonight's game, Eric Lewis, Galen Durant, and Clarence Middlebrooks. Blue Lights comes into the ball game, having dropped its last two contests back in Jacksonville, Florida over the weekend. Uh, the Panthers on a five-game skid as well. They're looking to turn things around. It's going to be Landon Nall jumping against Chris Coger. And it is controlled by University Prep, and we are underway. University in the and uh, quickly a uh, a whistle as I uh, wanted to get the uh, clock reset here early on, and uh, we're going to get that uh, squared away here in just a moment. University in their blue uniforms with the white trim and white letters, and the homestanding thoroughbreds in white with the blue trim and the orange piping and we are underway out front Tariq Rouse looking right side to Wheeler this is Nall working against Eric Williams a different look for the thoroughbreds than in the previous game with Coger and Williams now active 
And a turnover by University Prep. Running up against the 30-second clock, and we are underway with the first offensive possession of the evening for the Thoroughbreds, 1922 to play here in the first half. Dan Fury joins me now. And, uh, Dan, I want to thank you personally for uh, filling in for me at uh, the last game a couple of weeks ago, an emergency situation. And uh, Yeoman's work at the last minute, thanks so much, as uh, Jeremiah gets his own miss outside the Holloway for three. Yeah, Mike, no problem. It was a great time. Normally on the other side of the floor on the PA, but stepped up over here and had a great time doing it. I really appreciate that. And uh, just a second uh, as we get the shot by Wheeler misses and Holloway brings it across for the herd, kicks it inside off the glass, Williams for two. And it's an early five to nothing advantage for the herd. Good assist there by Holloway be singing his praises a little bit more in just a moment. There's the attempted strip, not there. Inside for Nall, knocked away by Koger. And with 16 to shoot, it'll still belong to you, Prep. This Blue Lights College defense running around. They're all over the place early on here. Yep, feeling like it. They, uh, with those two losses in their pocket from the tournament over the weekend, they're looking to pick up a W here and uh, showing some good energy early on. There's the scoop up and off the glass. Good by Shamar Hickson. And uh, they are on the board for the first time at 5-2. to two. This is Anderson to Baker at the point. Baker over to Holloway, the sophomore. In the corner, and he looked good in practice. Can't hit it that time, does Anderson, who has been in a tremendous shooting slump over the past month. Started off the season red hot. A fresh 20 seconds on the shot clock as it was knocked out of bounds by University Prep, and Anderson will have it on the end line to inbound with 17.50 to play here in the first half to Holloway. Guarded by Rouse over to Baker. Back to Holloway, corner, Anderson for three, got it that time, there he goes. Got to hope something like that early on kicks him off and gets him going in the right direction after these last couple weeks where he's slumped. Eight to two now, the early lead for Blue Lights. Ball knocked away, picked back up outside by Hickson. Hickson going inside to Nall, he can't handle it, gets his own rebound though and a whistle on the follow. And Nall will have two shots coming up as uh, the foul uh, looks like that's going to go against Chris Koger, his first, team's first. And uh, the Thoroughbreds have not gone up against anybody taller than Landon Nall all year at 6'9". Uh, he hurt the Thoroughbreds with uh, 10 points in the first meeting back on January the 26th, he averages 12 rebounds a game. Gets it the hard way, finally drops through, and another one will be coming momentarily. 17-18 to play, first half. By the way, I meant to tell you, I didn't tell you. <laughs> In my, my rush to get a set up earlier as Law Nall misses the second one cleared by Koger. If you need more uh, volume on your headphones, that's your button right there. Outside, not there. Rebound comes down to Wheeler. Here comes UP. Rouse has his path cut off by Holloway. They'll kick it back outside. Hickson to set up. He finds Faison. Watch out. He is dangerous. Working against Williams. Gets away. Koger with the block. Koger with authority outside. Gets his first block of the ball game. 16-52 to play first half. 8-3. 15 on the shot clock. This is Faison looking. Looking. Gets it into Rouse. Rouse will set it up. Waits for Rouse to get out. Gets it over to Rouse right now. Excuse me, to Faison. Faison inside. His shot not there. Tapped up and in by Nall. 
Yeah, I don't know who got the last finger on that, but <laughs> no. points go to Null there. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. We'll get it. We'll give it to him, and just in case, Eric Williams moving on the baseline. The reverse is there. Williams has been huge, a huge addition to this team since he was activated a couple games ago, especially with the loss of Jacobson. Hard off the iron for Nall, gets his rebound and puts up the baby hook for two. And I have him with uh, five of the first seven. I may have missed one, a swat away by Nall. By the way, I, uh, I jumped right in and forgot that my apologies to Roderick Warren. I swore to him the first thing that I would do would be the Duke Sports Medicine injury report, and I blew right past that, and I apologize for that. But the only injury to speak of is uh, that of uh, losing Denzel Jacobson, of course, for the season with that sprained wrist. Everybody else is uh, dressed and ready for the thoroughbreds this evening. Shot by Baker, not there. Gets his own rebound off the glass. Can't get it to drop. Followed by Koger in traffic. No good, and Nall has the rebound. Duke Sports Medicine injury report. Duke Sports Medicine and Apex, the official sports medicine provider of the thoroughbreds. 15 and a half to play, first half, 10 to seven. Wheeler off the glass, too hard. Gets his own rebound, loses it off of his foot, out of bounds. He fights for the chance to uh, get it back for UP, but he is not going to win that argument. Holloway to Anderson, who hopefully has found his shooting touch once again. He certainly had it in last Thursday's game against Tacoa Falls. He had 17 in that one, especially in the second half. In the first half tonight. That's two in a row for him. Sometimes it's more about just having that confidence after a couple knockdowns there. And like I said, hopefully that gets him going in the right direction. 13 to seven. This is Nall on the baseline. Season opening has his shot swatted away. Probably he's not used to that. Chris Koger can sky with him, however. Anderson working inside, spinning off the glass, not there. Rebound by Hickson. Here comes UP. Stops, pops, shoots off the back iron, cleared by Williams. Still 13 to seven. Holloway finds his man inside. That's Koger with the turnaround. Fifteen to seven. Fourteen ten to go. First half. Inside, out, back outside. Nall says, "I've got threes, but not on that case." Tapped out of bounds. Last touch. They'll say by UP, and Koger will get to inbound it. And a timeout on the floor. It's our first media timeout of the afternoon. Fifteen to seven. Blue Lights leading University Prep back after this on the Thoroughbred Sports Network. The Mascot Media National Sports app is your home for your sports network. A free download in the App Store and Google Play this app is the home base for your entire athletic program. Schedules, scores, rosters, news, social media, final score notifications, along with the ability to watch live broadcasts are just a touch away. Show your school support and allow your business to be featured throughout your school's mobile app. The Mascot Media National Sports App, your home for your sports network. The best way to... And back to action, inbounds to Baker, 14 minutes to play. First half, 15 to seven, the lead, blue lights jumping out early, but there's the steal by Tariq Rouse. He's gonna take it the distance and lay it up and in. He's got his first bucket of the evening, 15 to nine. Baker working against Faison, who has the unusual number eight jersey inside, and one coming for Koger. Fouled inside by Faison, who got a hand on him. That'll be his first. 
And I believe the first against U Prep. This is my first game since a couple weeks ago watching Coger and Williams, and they look like they're going to be a two-headed monster out there, both on the offensive end, finding each other, and I think it's going to take both of them to shut down Nall under the hoop. Did uh, were you did you see Denzel Jacobson play before he went out? Yes, I saw him in his first game, and wow, yeah, he is an athlete out there. Yeah, he really that is. Was, and I, the only game I saw him, he had already been injured. Baker taking it through the paint for two. Yeah, he's uh, his services will be missed for the season. Uh, just imagine if the Thoroughbreds could have had Jacobson along with Williams and Coger. Yeah, that's that scary. Yeah, uh, but that could happen next season. Outside facing for three as he's starting to get warmed up. He's hit two in a row, 20 to 15, and you prep starting to feel it underneath Williams fighting for the ball, trying to get up, and a whistle. Is that going to be three seconds or a foul? Let's see. I think we had a timeout, maybe. Yep. Oh, that's what it is. Uh, in order to keep possession, Mario Farr uh, wisely calling a timeout from the bench. And so with 12.43, we'll keep it right here, a five-point advantage for the thoroughbreds. You prep uh, down 15 to seven. They have uh, fought back, trimming it to a five point deficit now uh, here in the, the last couple of, or actually the last a minute 15 or so. Uh, yeah, a disappointing trip for the thoroughbreds to Florida as they had high hopes of improving on last year's finish where they uh, came up short in the championship game from a year ago in Lake Zurich, Illinois, falling to a very tough Toccoa Falls College team in uh, the opening round, and then an inspired bunch of Warriors from Appalachian Bible College picked up their first win in nine tries against the Thoroughbreds, uh, defeating the Herd 78-74 to in the fifth place game on Saturday afternoon. Anderson. Off the back iron, tapped up once, not there. Koger's shot uh, deflected off of the iron, and now Baker wants a shot at it, but he'll give it up to Holloway. Holloway guarded by Wheeler inside to Koger. Koger looking to turn around off the glass, not there, and the rebound comes down to U Prep with 12.20 to play here in the first half. Here's Faison. He can do damage from just about anywhere on the court. Daniel Green has checked into the ball game. He's number zero for you, Prep, a 6'4 senior guard. Shot is up, not there. Rebound cleaned out by Williams. Here comes Baker. He can take it coast to coast. Instead, gives it up. Baseline drive. Holloway shot blocked by Faison. Faison. Doing it at both ends of the floor with his first two of the ball game. He has eight points now and a timeout. And that's going to be called by U Prep. 11.42 to play. That'll serve as our second media timeout of the afternoon. 20 to 17 as U Prep is a stretching or a closing in on blue lights. Back after this. At Academy Sports and Outdoors, every pair of shoes comes with a view. And all our workout gear works as hard as you do. Our yoga wear offers a whole new perspective. And our home gyms inspire new profile pictures. No one has more ways to get fit, stay fit, and live fit at everyday low prices than Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low price, every day. You can hurt yourself anywhere, on the field, in the yard, or walking down the street. At Duke Orthopedics, we offer a range of treatments, from urgent care and sports medicine to physical therapy and advanced surgery. And now we've added more locations, more specialists, and extended our clinic hours so you can get seen quickly. We're giving you convenient access to orthopedic care when, where, and how you need it. Back to action. Mason Rump has checked into the ball game for the first time. For Blue Lights College, tapped out of bounds, last touched by Hickson. And with 15 to shoot, the herd will retain possession. 
U Prep on a 10 to 5 run over the last three minutes. Here comes Holloway. He finds Anderson. He hit from there earlier, but is going to drive, kick it over to Williams. His shot too long, gets his own rebound, flushes it home. And that's a Pizza Hut stuff of the game brought to you by Pizza Hut stuffed crust pizza. Pizza Hut 301 North Salem Street, downtown Apex 22 to 17. With a highlight reel there on a nice feed from Anderson. And the stuff by Williams. We're headed the other direction now. Loose ball. Holloway comes away with it. Gets his man inside. Nice feed inside Williams to Coger for two. Williams to Coger. I think that's going to be the key to the game here. I think if they keep finding each other like that. And then on that previous possession, Anderson was able to drive there. He, he might have had a shot from three, but he held up, drove, and kicked it out. Eventually led to that huge slam from Williams. And Williams just picked up a personal. This will be, I have this as his first of the game as he's called for the block on the baseline as Wheeler was cutting to make the pass. 13 on the shot clock and substitutions. Nall checks back in and Christian Weatherall, a 6'3 junior, checks into the ball game for U Prep. And for the Thoroughbreds, we get our first look of the evening at Christian Baker, 6'6", 210 pound sophomore out of Raleigh. He comes in replacing Williams. So getting some bulk, keeping the height inside with 10-22 to play first half, a 24-17 advantage for Blue Lights. This is Rouse shaking and baking, scoops up, puts up the underhanded shot, not there, hauled in by Green. Green puts it up on the baseline. Nall has it, works over Baker, can't get it to drop another. Rebound for U Prep with 10 minutes to play and 19 on the shot clock, and Rouse says, let's set this thing up outside. Nall comes out to the center circle. Over to Rouse, far side, man-to-man -man defense, and they get by that. Rouse with the scoop up and in around Anderson for two. Five-point advantage now for the Thoroughbreds with 9.40 to play. Rump gets the pick from Coger over to Holloway. To Anderson in the corner, man-to-man -man being shown by U Prep. Coger working against Nall. Over to Baker. Baker finds Coger again. The turnaround may have been deflected partially by Nall, and U Prep comes away with it. Yeah, Nall, Nall got a hand on that one. He's definitely going to be a force down below on defense, but I think if uh, Coger and Williams team up, that's going to be tough for Nall to shut both of them down. Nall averaging just a hair under 10 points a ball game. Losing the handle with some assist from the defensive-minded thoroughbred. So U Prep will retain possession. Only seven on the shot clock. 9:01 on the game clock. First half. Tariq Rouse getting the honors on the end line. Finds Faison. Working it around the horn. This is Daniel Green. Two seconds. One. And that is a shot clock violation. And a turnover to the thoroughbred. Jadek Chalka just checked into the ball game on that last dead ball. He's a 5'8 freshman guard out of Kalau, Peru. And he takes the inbounds from Rump. Working against Rouse. Chalka had a good showing in the NIT and a uh, blocking foul against Rouse, his first, and I have that as the team's second. I may, but my my stats are highly unofficial, Dan. <laughs> Let's point that out early on. And a turnover, no, a foul, away from the basketball against the thoroughbreds, and I didn't see who that was called against. We'll catch it up at halftime. 8.42 before the intermission here, 24-19. Thoroughbreds have led all the way. To Faison, to Rouse, to Nall. Looks like he took some steps. Couldn't get that one to drop. Rebound comes down to the thoroughbreds. Rumpf at the controls. 
finds Williams. Williams works around his man and drops it through. Williams doing some early damage, 26 to 19, 8 12 to play. Almost a backcourt violation, but saved by Nall. Rouse to Faison. Far side, this is Weatherall. Now baseline, Nall working against Baker. Shot won't drop, rebound. Here comes Anderson in the thoroughbreds to Chalka. Chalka with the scoop shot. Can't get it to drop. Nall cleans the glass for you, Prep. Battle in the corner and a turnover and that should be a media timeout. Seven minutes and 40 seconds to play first half. We'll have some subs checking in for you in just a moment though. 26 to 19, our score media timeout. Thoroughbreds leading you prep here in Apex back after this on the Thoroughbred Sports Network. It was a dark night in drive through land. The people had grown tired of greasy burgers and gut bombs. But then, three heroes emerged. Their savory sauces brought courage. Their juicy tomatoes brought might. Their roast chicken brought the taste of roast chicken. They were called Arby's New Market Fresh Wraps. And everyone ate happily ever after the end. Arby's, we have the meat. Hey, what's up, Blue Lights College fans? My name is Sean Walder, and I'm the worship pastor here at Apex Baptist Church. And we just want to take a moment to say how honored we are to partner with Blue Lights College and have them on our campus practicing every single week. We're thankful for their involvement in the community and their commitment to serve as first responders. You guys are amazing, and we are so thankful for you allowing us to be a part of all that you do. And I, I rarely look at the numbers. I just, I just know them by sight, and we're back, as, I, as my sight now tells me from technical director. Rod Warren, 26 to 19. And Dan was correcting me. I, I credited Williams with a bucket that should have been to Chris Coger, as Williams was not even in the ball game at the time. And as good as he is, even he cannot score from the bench. This is Chalka working against Rouse, gets free, finds Malcolm Mills, who's just checked into the ball game for the first time. Jeremiah Baker back into the thoroughbred lineup to Mills. Mills to Baker. Baker was the uh, intended recipient, I think, from uh, Baker there on an alley-oop, but he couldn't get there. Tapped out of bounds, six seconds on the shot clock, and Chalka will inbound from the far side. Blue Lights has four of their five starters on the bench right now. Got to imagine getting them rested up for and, hopefully a little run here right And at the, the, end of the uh, shot clock did not start, so we're going to have to count that one down and start it over with three seconds now to shoot. So uh, a little more pressure on for BLC. Chalka looking, finds Christian Baker inside for two. That's how you do it. 28-19 lead back to eight, make it nine. Just under seven minutes to go in this first half of action. No fans in the stands, of course, due to COVID restrictions. Glad you could join us wherever you are. There's a nice drive inside. Can't finish, but two shots should be coming up for the senior, Daniel Green. And I believe it's going to be called on Chalka. Yeah, they got Chalka for that one. I have that as the team's fourth. Nothing but net for Green, his first bucket of the night. And Atlanta product Donnell Avery checking into the ball game for BLC for the first time this evening as Chalka takes a break. One more shot coming up for Mr. Green. And he hits on them both. 28-21. Baker gets the pick from Baker. And Avery in the corner looking to shake away from Rouse.
Avery blocked by Wheeler. Baker underneath, and he follows. That's Christian Baker for two, and he's got six quick points. Yeah, Blue Lights has struggled to get anything going on offense, but Baker has been able to salvage something on those last two trips down the court. They get four points, and there's Wheeler hitting from outside for his first one of the night, and I just noticed, uh, I did not uh, notice this earlier, but Brandon Pogolio, who had 18 points on six of nine shooting for U Prep in the first meeting back in January is uh, not present or not dressed here this evening. Was that Mills on that last shot? I missed that one. I was yakking and not paying attention. I believe it was Mills. Nevertheless, 32-24. Baker taking it in. The Bakers keeping Blue Lights College alive here with uh, the majority of the starters on the bench. Baker. Baker boys making lots of cookies right now. 5-18 <laughs> to play. We'll take a timeout. 34-24 the lead and even 10. And uh, let's see if this is, uh, this is a 30. We will keep it right here. And I believe that was Mills that scored on that uh, previous uh, uh, bucket that we missed down here. But we'll get you caught up at halftime uh, on that one. Uh, but uh, Brandon Pagolio, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that is him uh, that is in cities over on the uh, bench for U Prep. Yeah, he hurt the thoroughbreds with 18 point shot, 67% from the field, and uh, he averages 40% from three and 70 from the charity stripe. So uh, he definitely had a, a big game that night. Not sure uh, what uh, the situation is, why he could not dress this evening, but definitely Terry Rouse missing uh, those contributions from his senior guard here this evening. 34-24 with 5.18 to play here in the first half. Coming up on Saturday, uh, that'll be the uh, next game for uh, Blue Lights College as the Thoroughbreds hit the road, traveling to Virginia Beach, Virginia, to take on Bryant and Stratton. And uh, then we will be uh, back home our next home game, actually uh, two weeks from tonight. Uh, we'll be back uh, back home to uh, face Bryant and Stratton. I believe that's uh, that'll be the return trip to uh, uh, take on uh, the Bobcats. And one more home game on the schedule as of right now will be the following Tuesday after that Tidewater Prep team that uh, we saw back at the in the very first game of the season. And, uh, boy, they did a number on the Thoroughbreds. Uh, they're going to make the trip to Apex uh, to round out the, uh, the homestand here. That is barring any other... Uh, changes, Dan Fury, in the scheduling. Uh, just today, we had two games actually added to the schedule. Uh, those are both on the road, and uh, we're a little, uh, a little bit uh, premature there for U Prep as uh, Blue Light's still breaking from the huddle. And so they'll try that one once again and wait for the thoroughbreds uh, and give them the courtesy of getting into place. Can't fault them for trying to take an easy basket, I, though. Yeah, you know, you, you can do that in uh, football before they get set. Not, not so much here tonight. And here we go. Our thanks to Eric Lewis for being on top of that official over by the scorer's table with just over five minutes to play. It's a ten-point advantage for the thoroughbreds. Off to Rouse. Rouse finds Nall between the circles, goes to his right, back to his point guard, guarded by Avery. Two seconds, one second, and we have – Another 30-second shot clock violation by U-Prep. Another turnover to the Thoroughbreds. And I'll admit, the horn is almost non-existent on, uh, on, on that clock. But, hey, they're, kudos to Blue Lights for forcing them to uh, make that turnover. Uh, they're keeping uh, the defense pressure turned up. Here, uh, speaking of pressure, knocked away. Uh, yeah, that's a good defensive play by Daniel Green on Jeremiah Baker. That doesn't happen very often. Yeah, I believe that was the third time they forced a violation in this first half. Um, they've done a good job. And speaking of forcing a turnover, uh, Avery puts his foot over the center line for a turnover to U Prep. 
Wheeler to inbounds. And again, Eric Lewis waiting until everybody's in uh, position. Make sure that the uh, clock is set and we are ready to go. Clarence Middlebrooks gives the signal and we're off. 428 and counting. Still a 10 point advantage for Blue Lights. Rouse almost had his pocket picked there. Outside, no good. Rebound, Rump off to Avery. Avery looking for help, finds it in the form of Malcolm Mills, but it's thrown out of bounds, last touched by the Thoroughbreds. Baker continues to be the lone starter on the floor for the Thoroughbreds. And with a 10-point advantage, uh, this is a good opportunity to give the starters a, a break. And the guys off the bench keeping that going. And uh, Rumpf going to be called for uh, catching, I believe it was Hickson with the body. And uh, Rumpf picking up the what I believe will be the fifth personal against the Thoroughbreds here in the first half. Four minutes to go in this first half of action as Rump almost comes away with the steal but touches it out of bounds, turning it back over to you, Prep. Yeah, these guys off the bench have done an amazing job tonight. Not, you, only, on, not only on defense, but of, of figuring out a way to put the ball in the basket on offense. It hasn't been, always been pretty, but they've at least you know, been able to put it in and you know, maintain the distance. Hickson outside, off the glass, not there. Rump cleans it, here we go. He almost has his pocket picked. In fact, he does momentarily, and there, picked away from Donnell Avery. Off the glass, not there, and both players go down, and it's lost out of bounds by uh, Shamar Hickson. And the Thoroughbreds will have it with a fresh shot clock and three minutes and 33 seconds to go. That means we have a timeout on the floor with Blue Lights leading University Prep 34-24. Back after this on the Thoroughbred Sports Network. The Mascot Media National Sports app is your home for your sports network. A free download in the App Store and Google Play, this app is the home base for your entire athletic program. Schedules, scores, rosters, news, social media, final score notifications, along with the ability to watch live broadcasts are just a touch away. Show your school support and allow your business to be featured throughout your school's mobile app. The Mascot Media National Sports App, your home for your sports network. Duke Orthopedics is expanding our care. We're adding more doctors, specialists, and urgent care locations with extended hours. We're making care more convenient for the most important reason of all, you. Big day of closet organizing and jigsaw puzzling? Get Pizza Hut's Big Dinner Box, two medium pizzas, breadsticks, and your choice of pasta or wings. Sealed for your safety, all in one box. Choose contactless delivery or new curbside pickup at PizzaHut.com. Back to action and uh, wholesale substitutions as uh, I believe the starting five are back on the floor now for Coach Mario Farr. 34-24, the Thoroughbreds on a 14-7 run over the past eight minutes or so, uh, but they've been uh, they've had a dry spell here for the last couple of minutes. They've stretched the lead out to 10, 34-24, with 3.17 to play here in the first stanza. Koger to inbound, baseline, gets it over to Holloway. Holloway being guarded by Rouse, finds his path cut off, Brings it back outside to Anderson, working it around the horn into Koger. Back outside, three on the way. Anderson's got it! And he's got nine points on the evening. Largest lead of the night at 37 to 24. Wheeler finds Hickson. Now to Faison. 16 to shoot. Man-to-man -man defense by Blue Lights. Hickson dangerous from uh, facing dangerous from anywhere, and Wheeler dangerous from downtown for his second tray of the night. Ball, 
And a foul uh, going against Blue Lights. Did you happen to catch who that was? I think it was Holloway. I think they got him for the foul there. I've got that as six personals here in the first period. And the lead back to 10 at 37-27. Ray Faison needing some help, finds it in Wheeler. Right side, Hickson, back outside. Ray Faison rattles it home for three. If His third tray, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Dan, third tray of the ball game. Yeah, if you're university prep here, you'd love to go into the break only down five or six as opposed to that ten. Yep. I think Coach Fars was looking to rest those stars and have them come, in, come back in, go on a run here towards the end of the half, but prep is kind of doing their own thing. Yep, and that thing right now is being led by Ray Faison, who just scored his second basket in a row. 37-32, back to five, and Baker sinks it from outside for three. Jeremiah Baker with his first tray of the ball game. Lead back to eight with a minute 20 to go. Outside, Wheeler, he's hit from there before. Can't make it happen this time. And Holloway gets the tip. Over to Coger for two. Push that lead back out to 10. That's got to be a good feeling. Get a stop here, get a basket, hopefully go into the half with a double-digit lead. One minute to play first half, and Koger with the block on Nall. Knocked out of bounds. It'll stay with you, Prep. I think Nall's getting a little frustrated on there. under there. He hasn't been able to probably play his game, especially when he's had Koger and Williams out there. Wheeler on the baseline, dangerous, but he's met with opposition. This is facing over on the shoulder, can't get it to go. Tapped up once, twice. Jeremiah Baker says, enough of that, give it to me. He takes it the distance off the glass, can't get the roll. And now you prep and Ray Faison. He can take it coast to coast and does, and a whistle. And one coming up for Ray Faison. Great athletic move there by Faison. Kind of came up short, went behind the back there, and that freed him up to go all the way to the hoop. Koger picking up what I have as his second foul, and Faison get a chance to add to his points and does so, and trims the lead back to seven once again at 42-35 with 30 seconds to play. Shot not there. Holloway diving for it, can't save it. And you prep. We'll get possession as they're met with token opposition, and the shot clock is off. 25 seconds to play. Nall kicks it back outside. They'll work it around and almost picked. Yes, picked up by Eric Williams with the steal. 15 seconds. Baker met by Wheeler. 10 seconds. Anderson to Holloway. Finds Williams. Williams with the turnaround. He's blocked out of bounds by Faison. 2.5 seconds and a technical foul. And if Eric Williams isn't careful, he's going to get another one. So apparently he said something that Galen Durant did not care for. And the desperation shot off the iron. Well, it was close for an off-balance shot by Daquan Holloway. And uh, the half comes to a conclusion. And it's been mostly thoroughbreds here as they lead it by seven at the break, 42 to 35. And, uh, Dan, your, uh, your thoughts as we go into halftime. I think uh, Blue Lights kind of stumbled into the half a little bit there. I really think they were looking to extend that 10-point lead out to 10 or 12, 15 points. Instead, they go in only up seven. Uh, University Prep went on a little run there. And you also end up with that technical there on Williams. So he's got to be careful. Can't lose him. 
Blue Lights College, grateful for the partnership of New Horizons Fellowship on William Street and Apex, where BLC's innovative community policing classes take place each week. New Horizons Fellowship is a safe place to experience God at your own pace. You're invited to visit one of New Horizons Sunday morning celebrations at 10 a.m. or learn more at nhf.com. CC 42 to 35 here at the break. We're going to step away and you stick around for the Pierce Group Benefits halftime show. We'll be back in a few moments with our first half stats and the second half of action here on the Thoroughbred Sports Network. Meet Tom and Susan. Both are in charge of finding a benefits package for their company. Both have a tight budget. Both need a variety of coverage for their employees, a health plan, and a medical bridge plan to cover out-of-pocket costs, as well as dental, vision, life, disability, and flexible spending accounts. Tom decided to shop around for each type of coverage, calling several different companies, getting quotes. This meant that Tom didn't have the time to do the other work that he needed to be doing. This made Tom frustrated. Susan had a better idea. She called Pierce Group Benefits. After talking to Pierce Group, explaining what she was looking for, Pierce Group used their years of benefits experience and industry knowledge and shopped the market for her, finding her the best prices, benefits, and services. And not only was Susan able to focus on the work that she needed to, but her employees were happy as well. Tom was still calling companies, his other work kept piling up, and his employees were still overpaying for their benefits. Susan's not the only one who has found Pierce Group's partnership beneficial. People all over North Carolina are using Pierce Group to focus on long and short-term goals for their organization. We appreciate the opportunity to work as partners for the long run. Why not find out how Pierce Group can help you? Uh, my name is Mario Farr, head man's basketball coach here at Blue Lights College. Um, I did this my uh, third year as head coach, uh, and I've been here all four years uh, assistant for the first year. For one, uh, protocol for practices uh, definitely been different. Um, uh, we definitely come in, you know, taking temperature checks um, before you even start. Um, and we also make sure we wear masks now, um, and we six feet apart. Um, you know, you know, most teams try to come together before, or after practice, um, to talk. But we try to stay in a big circle, um, even to close out and everything. You know, we just close out. You know, with our, with our hands up and six feet distant and everything. Uh, but it's it's been definite changes. Uh, but we got to do what we can. Uh, it's a shorter season. Uh, my recruiting efforts. Uh, definitely was uh, tampered this season, but uh, I'm still excited. We still came together, and, uh, and I know we're going to be great. Um, first, I would say, you know, I always look for character. So I think uh, the character this year, um, each and every year, always continues to uh, get better. Uh, the kids, such great kids this year. Um, also look for a little more IQ. Uh, this year, so I think I got a lot more guards, um, pass first guards. Uh, I think that's very important uh, to get other people involved. Um, I think it's a very smart team this year, so I think it'd be it's a little easier for me to coach because it's a smarter team. You know, I don't have to you know say every little thing all the time with you know dribble drive and kick and all that type of stuff. It's it makes it a lot easier with a, a better IQ team. So. Uh, with that being said, I know it's going to be a uh, more successful season, um, and I'm excited about it. Um, well, being in the conference this, this year, uh, we've been trying to have it for a couple years now, so I'm ecstatic about it. Um, and I'm excited about the teams that we have, and um, I know, uh, you know, I'm prepared to be number one in the conference, and, you know, come back with the championship of the conference as well. Uh, being a coach here, um, again, uh, just knowing the president of the, of the school, President Jock Gilbert, um, who's now mayor of the city, um, just meeting him and uh, his vision and everything he has for this school, uh, 
you know, I, I wanted to back it up 100% to change uh, not only this community, um, but, you know, as it continues to grow, um, to change the world. Uh, what I mean by change is um, changing policing uh, for the better, especially those in, in my culture, you know, it's frowned upon, but I think uh, what he's really trying to change is that mindset um, and also trying to change the, the culture of policing to where, you know, they're more compassionate um, and understand that they're uh, servers of the community. Um, and I back that 100%. Um, my name is Gabriel Mendez. I'm originally from Miami, Florida, and I'm a freshman here at Blue Lights. I was doing a lot of research on police academies and places I wanted to go to be able to just further my experience and hopefully be a part of the change that I wanted to see. And I came across Jock's video on YouTube. It's definitely been what I have expected, but also a lot more as well. Um, there's a lot of camaraderie that you don't really see anywhere else. Um, and you really just get to build genuine relationships in this school really challenges you in what you believe in and what you want to do. So originally, I just wanted to be a part of the team. I wanted to be able to build friendships and relationships with the boys here and that turned into a brotherhood. Um, and I've just been able to see relationships grow and these boys really go after what they really want. My name is Christopher Koger. I'm from uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. It's my first year here at Blue Lights College. Uh, I moved down here five years ago from Philadelphia. Uh, I heard about you guys from my high school coach. I wanted to go to school for law enforcement and be a good, this is a good, good deal going on with you guys. Yes, sir. When I'm older, I want to become a homicide detective. Uh, I always wanted to be that since I was young, of course. I like this group. I like the, the guys I play with. Um, we got a good bond. We click just like that. Ever since I first met them at the showcase, we just click. And we've been good ever since. See myself in five years, uh, being a good cop, uh, hopefully going looking to be a detective and uh, making a change in the community. Making a change for me means uh, just like go out there and like make a different path and like set a different tone for the officers. Tell them what's right from wrong and just doing the right thing, making everybody happy. Uh, my name is Eric Williams. I'm from Lexington, South Carolina, and I'm a freshman here at Blue Lights College. Um, I really heard about the opportunity from my uh, high school basketball coach, and then Mario reached out to me, and then it just took off from there. Um, my expectations were like, it was gonna be like a military school, really, but I was definitely wrong. It's more of a very loving and caring environment, and it's really, really fun, and I just wanna see where it goes from here. Um, I wouldn't really say it's a team, it's more of a family, a, a brotherhood, you know, it's, it's something that I can't describe, it's, we have each other's backs, right or wrong, any time of the day, it's no matter what. Uh, I, I got much love for them boys, I'll do anything for them, that's just what it is. I would say as far as goals, we have to, I just want to win as much as we can, that's, that's with any team I guess, but we just got to work extra hard and make sure that we accomplish more than we ever could think of. My name is Donnell Avery. I'm from Decatur, Georgia. This year is going to be my freshman year. I found out about Blue Lights College from a very long friend I ain't heard from in a while. He said it would be a good environment for me to come into, so I feel like that would be a great experience for me. I did not expect a very hands-on uh, experience, but I kind of love a hands-on experience inside of a classroom, and it's very, uh, I can say, very active. We get very active in the classroom, and I love being able to talk right in front of my professor. So, I love having a classroom experience at Blue Light. Uh, I love this group right now. Uh, it's very intense in practice. We have very intense practices. Uh, we're hungry, you know what I'm saying? It's not a lot of teams that get to have seasons this year, so we're blessed to have a season this year with uh, Mr. Gilbert giving us a season, so we're very blessed and we're hungry. <laughs> we hungry, we need it. Everything, we need it. We need a ring, <laughs> rings, trophies, we want it all. We just, like I said, we just, we blessed to have this year. 
very proud, you know what I'm saying, for ourselves to be able to get up every day and grow through this cause. There's too much going on in 2020, so we just blessed. We want everything we can achieve, every accolade we want. We, we, we gonna get it. We hungry. We're hungry. <laughs> very hungry. We hungry, fellas. My name is Chris McCullers. Uh, I'm from Garden, North Carolina, and this is my first year at Blue Lights. Uh, well, I've heard about Blue Lights um, through, through my mom, we was like looking at like colleges and stuff, and um, we came across it. And uh, it was first when we noticed it was about a pleasing academy. I wasn't too sure, but like just like reading reading about it, it had other great stuff, um, great recommendations about it. So we were just talking about it, and you know you can always just take a chance and just you know see what's what it's about. Great experience. Like, no one feels left out. I feel like everybody feels like they're part of a family here. Um, you get to know, know people really quick. Um, everybody just pours out their emotion. Everybody talks and stuff like that. So it's, it's really good and uh, family oriented. It probably had to be AAU when I had a, uh, hit a game winner. Um, yeah, it was probably AAU when I hit a game winner. We was in a tournament in Florida. It's pretty good. Yeah, playing locally and or having the opportunity to play locally is a great, great thing. Uh, you have family members come out, family friends that you uh, love, and it's good to see them support you. And um, just knowing that you're in a, a good environment is really what like keeps me going. I really like playing around, like close to home. Yeah, so that's pretty much. Uh, my name is Christian Baker. I'm from Rod, North Carolina, and this is my second year at Blue Lash College. Uh, I feel like it was a great opportunity to get more, uh, not just more college experience, but you know, to join the Blue Lights family again. Last year I did have a great experience. Uh, we had a great team, classes were great, Blue Lights College as a whole was great, and I'm just glad I got another opportunity to come back. Uh, it's definitely kind of a responsibility, because being a second year, uh, I, I was here last year, and you know, co both the coaches and my teammates were looking for me to, you know, Put up, set a good example for not only my teammates, but you know, for um, just anything. If you want to be a great leader, you know, you got you got to show that you can both lead others as well as you know. I don't know. I can't really explain it. It's kind of a weird experience. I never thought I'd be put in a position to lead. So I'm glad Rio gave me this opportunity, and I'm hoping I can meet his expectations. Definitely make some noise. Uh, it's good to be in the conference. It's good, good not just for us, but for you know Blue Lights as a whole. Hopefully, we can you know get our name out, get more people to you know look at us, and hopefully, if we can, get a ring, get some get some hardware, and you know build a program. My name is Denzel Jacobson. I'm from Raleigh, North Carolina, and I'm a first year student here at Blue Lights College. All right. I graduated from Apex High School, and. Uh, to be able to play college ball in Apex, it, it means a lot. Be able to represent my city some more. Welcome back, everybody, as we get set for second half of action here at Hope Community Church Arena with Dan Fury. I'm Mike Davis. Let's take a look at the first half scoring. First for University Prep, 13 points for Ray Faison. He did it inside and outside uh, with uh, three points, Logan Wheeler. Eight points, Landon Nall including a three, showing he's got some range on him as well. Two points for Daniel Green and Tariq Rouse with nine points. Only two points for uh, Shamar Hickson. Expect to see him uh, get a little bit more active in the second half uh, scoring-wise. For the Thoroughbreds, just going down the – I'm just going to take it right down the list numerically here. Kenny Anderson with nine, all of them coming from beyond the arc. That's a good sign for him. Jeremiah Baker finishes the half with seven points. And uh, Chris Coger, uh, leading scorer for the Thoroughbreds with 13 points in the first half. Three points for Daquan Holloway. Six for Eric Williams, two for Mason Rump, and Christian Baker with four in the foul column. Chris Coger and Yadek Chauka both, and Eric Williams, including that technical foul, uh, the two fouls apiece. So they're the only ones in any sort of uh, foul trouble for the thoroughbreds. Ray Faison picks up two. Tariq Rouse has two 
for you prep as we get set with a fresh 20 on the clock 42 to 35 as we begin the second half blue lights has led the entire way i believe at one point leading by 12 maybe i know by 10 i yeah. think they stretched it out to 12 points at one point and uh, so for uh, university prep uh, they want to try to claw back into this thing as quickly as possible dan fury yeah and blue lights has their starters from the first half, starting the second half here. They stumbled, like I said before, they stumbled into the half a little bit, but when they when they played together early on, on both ends of the court, they did a great job, you know, m working towards that 12 point lead and allowing them to, you know, be okay with giving up a few points before the half there. No uh, balls tied up in the first half for the possession arrow to change, so Blue Lights gets it to start the Second half, and Eric Williams starts it off in style with a good-looking J, and he has eight points on the night lead, stretches back to 11 points, and thrown away, intended for Nall, but outside even his lanky reach. Basket and a turnover right off the rip. Got to love that. Holloway working against Rouse. Here comes the sophomore. By the way, I said at the beginning of the game, his shot missed, tapped over to Nall. I said we're going to be singing his praises. He was named an academic All-American in the Bible College NIT over the weekend. Our congratulations to Daquan Holloway of Roxboro has a sparkling 4.0 GPA. Quickly down the floor to Williams, who can't get it to drop off the nice Full court pass from Holloway. 44-35 and a whistle. Williams with his third right there. That is not what Mario Farr wanted to see to uh, start the first half of action. Less than a minute into the second stanza, 44-35. First foul of the second half going against his starting center. And Williams will sit down. I talked to Eric at halftime. I said, what, what, did, what did you say? The tag guy said, I didn't say anything. I had my back turned to <laughs> I'm just. I looked at him. I said, well, don't do that again. Sometimes that's enough. That's all it takes. Anderson, all it would take right now for him is a three, but it was partially blocked by Wheeler. And was there a foul on the play? Uh, I think there was a foul. Was there, was there three shots coming up for Kenny? Uh, yes, that there are, like yeah, with Wheeler picking up his first personal and the first against the uh, Panthers. I have to say, and you were standing there when I asked Coach Terry Rouse, I said, uh, so what, what, is, what is your – what's your mascot? Are you the Panthers? Are you the Pumas? And he sort of chuckled and said, yeah, let's go with Panthers. That'll work. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard of such a thing. I don't think I don't think they're real big on mascots at <laughs> University Prep. It's uh, the second, missed the first. Anderson with an even ten on the night, looking to make it eleven, and he does. And the lead is at eleven. Eighteen forty-five to play. Forty-six thirty-five. Rouse stops, pops, shoots, and hits. That good for two is foot on the line. He's got 11 as well. Anderson says, I can do better than that, but not on that shot. Nall with the rebound for you, Prep. Again, man to man. That's what BLC has been sporting all night long on the defensive end. Rumpf in the ball game. He replaced Williams a few moments ago. 10 to shoot. Here comes Rouse. Cross to Wheeler. Wheeler, he'll put up the three. Not there. Battle for the rebound, and it's tied up before they both moved out of bounds, and U-Prep will keep possession, but only three seconds on the shot clock. Let's see if they're able to get up a shot uh, before they turn it over again. Well, they'll get on the uh, defensive rebound. They'll get a fresh 20, so they do have some time. Wheeler. Finds Faison working against Baker, the two best athletes on the floor. And just outside the reach, but he chases it down, does Nall. Out front, seven to shoot. This is Rouse. And a carry. Boy, you don't see that called anymore. You, you don't. I, 
I, I watch a lot of basketball, and it looks like just about everybody's carrying. Every, every play. But Eric Lewis says no. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Eric Lewis, also the uh, gentleman who called the technical foul. Now, is that going to be a block or a push-off? It is a block. Is that on uh, Hickson, number five? Oh, by the way, that reminds me. I, I will, I'll just I'll mark it up for the uh, second team foul. 20 to shoot. Koger looking to get around his man. He does so around Nall and draws the personal. And one coming up for Chris Koger, who now has 15 points. Uh, uh, by the way, and I, I, that shot that we missed in the first half, that was Mason Rumpf okay. who got it. That was his only bucket of the first half. My thanks goes to Amanda Metcalf, our academic advisor, who uh, chimed in and texted me and said, yeah, it was Mason. <laughs> She's paying closer attention than we are. 49-37, <laughs> back to 12. Koger hit that one, of course. Wheeler to Faison. To Rouse, 17 to shoot. 17-10 in the ball game. It's been the Thoroughbreds in the lead the entire way. They started off with lots of energy and were able to jump out in front. And is there a push off on Nall? Let's see if that's what the call is going to be. I believe yep. it is. And if so, that uh, I only have that as the second foul against the junior power forward, third team foul, turns the ball over to BLC. Jeremiah Baker, the hometown product, working against Faison, gets the pick from Koger, finds Anderson. Here's Holloway. Holloway working around top of the key. Good ball movement by the thoroughbreds. Block by Nall on Koger. He'll kick it back outside. Three on the way. Jeremiah Baker count it. He's got an even 10, and the lead is at 15. That's the largest of the night with 16.28 to go. Faison says, I'll take it all the way in, but he draws a personal, I believe. two shots coming up. He's got that. Christian Baker checking into the ball game. He'll replace Koger, who I think, uh, he, did he just pick up the person on there? He may have, yeah. I think so. That'll be his third. Rumpf into the ball game. I believe he checked in as well. Hits them both, 52-39. Anderson, Jay Baker, this is Holloway. Out front to Baker once again with 15 to shoot, and he'll set it up. Draws the defense out just a little bit with Holloway's help. Outside, long three, got it, no problem. Baker's hot right now. 55-39, 55-39, lead at 17. That's not right. I can't, I, my math is hard. 15-44, we'll figure that out later. 16, right, is that 16? I don't know. That's, it, it is, it's 16, it's yes. 16, yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm confident it is facing it's the front end. I've got him unofficially with 14 points. Who got the who, was, who drew the foul? Did you catch that? I didn't see that. So you got to do that for me because I, I ain't no good at that. I just can't, I can't do that. And these refs move stuff right along. When there's a foul, they get it called over the table real quick. They they Sometimes do. Sometimes it's tough to catch. And uh, calling a media timeout real quick as well. 15:44 to play in this one. It's Thoroughbreds over U Prep 55:41. Back after this on the Thoroughbred Sports Network. You could have Papa John's. Or you could leave your family at Stacy's Pizza Unlimited Buffet and start a new life in Omaha, Nebraska, all for $5.99, only at Stacy's.
Hey, Brian. Brian, let's go. Mom's inside. Before you make your big entrance at school, go to Academy Sports and Outdoors. Get all the best brands at everyday low prices and shop with confidence, which means you'll feel as good about the price as you do about the look. Dan, the Thoroughbreds opened up the second half on a 13-2 run, and now the uh, U-Prep Panthers have uh, they've added a couple in there, 55 to 41 with 15.40 to play. Here comes Holloway threading the needle outside in the corner to the elbow. There's Anderson for two. That's his first two-pointer of the ball game, according to my highly unofficial statistics, 57-41. Lead back to 16, dragged his foot. And you prep feeling the loss of uh, Pagolio, and they've dropped five in a row. And uh, so they're, uh, it, I'm not sure how long Pagolio's been out, but they've certainly, they're certainly missing him here this evening. Baker takes the pass and draws the two. Good look from Mason Rump there. Outside, Wheeler with a good looking Jay. He's got his second three of the night and a timeout on the floor. 59-44, 15-13. This is a 30. We'll keep it right here. As uh, I'm not, I believe, was that a, a thoroughbreds timeout? I'm not, I'm not sure. I've not been keeping track of the timeouts. Nevertheless, um, Mario Farr chatting things over. He'll have uh, some subs coming in here, I think, in just a second. It's Christian Baker. Makes an appearance here in the second half. Lead is at 16 once again. I can do that math, that 59-43 <laughs> thing. That's easier. Oh, boy. I've got a calculator around here somewhere. You think I could at least use that. And lost out of bounds of Anderson, so U-Prep will have the ball back. With a fresh 30 seconds right under their own basket. Facing to do the honors. Wheeler squares up but is met with opposition. Faison gets away from Baker, the Jeremiah variety, and Anderson stepped on the end line. So another turnover, in the same spot. It's, it's jinxed. Sean Cooper's made a, uh, an appearance with us now. He's running camera. Good evening to you, Sean. You prep basketball. This is Hickson to Wheeler, working it around to Faison, guarded by Baker. Nall with the hook, not there. Rebound comes down to the thoroughbreds. Jeremiah Baker finds Rump with the turnaround. Can't get it to drop. 14.40 to play, 59-43, Thoroughbreds with the lead, and you prep with the basketball. Stopping, popping, shooting, not there. Nall cleaning the glass, going back up off the glass for two. He's got ten points. Christian Baker to Jeremiah Baker to Anderson, quickly ahead to Rump to lays it in and one. Great look from Anderson there to find Rump and for Rump to power up and in on the and one. Ray Faison picks up what I have as his third foul. Stretches the lead 61-45. As Green checks back in, Nall sits down. And a rump to attempt, but no. Four on the night for rump, 61-45. Chalka's checked back into the ball games, and he gets his rebound. Anderson, nice look for three. Maybe Anderson's finding something here tonight. Stepped up and hit that two before. Maybe that give him a little more confidence. I think he's got four threes on the night. Yeah, I'm certainly thinking this is the kind of game that he's needed. 64-45, lead at 19, largest lead of the ball game, but Chalka tries to save the ball, but his foot was out of bounds. It'll belong to you, Prep. 
And they'll have 20 seconds on the shot clock, 13.41 to play in this one. Hugh Prep goes in deep to Wheeler. Far side to Green. Green working in the paint, kicks it back outside, facing dangerous. Out top, three on the way, not there. Rebound, Christian Baker. And Eric Lewis calling the personal on Green, I believe. That'll be uh, his first as I'm have it with my highly unofficial stats, and I have that as four. Do you have are you keeping track of the team stats at all? Team fouls. I believe fouls? that is four for the second half. Yeah. Chalka fouled on the play. I believe the foul is going to be on. I couldn't make out. I believe it was Rouse. Okay. I have that as his third, and, well, I've definitely missed some fouls because we're in the, we're in the bonus. 64-45. From the charity stripe, making it look easy is Hickson. He's got three on the night, 64-47. Chalka bringing it up. Heavy pressure by Hickson. Looking and finds Rump. Rumpf moves to the center. Now looks for Christian Baker. Nice bounce pass to Jeremiah Baker. Outside three is short by Anderson. Saved by Chalka, but no. Not so much. But a good attempt by the little guy, the 5'8", 148-pounder out of Peru. 64-47. Kicking it back, getting it across the timeline. Plenty of time to spare. Moving up and in with the uh, Euro hop. And that's Faison. 64-49. Off the glass. Nice work by Anderson. No slowdown there. He's having a whale of a game. 66-49. Yeah. Anderson keeps piling up those points. It hasn't necessarily been three after three like it has been in the past, but... Once he looks at the, his numbers after the game, I think that'll be a confidence booster. Christian Baker cleans the glass, gets it off to Rump. It's off to the races, and he is fouled on the play. He'll have two shots coming up as Green picks up what I have as his second. Yeah, Anderson was well short on that previous three. Came back and found the basket there. That's what uh, shooters just have to do. They just have to get it in the basket sometimes, one way or the other, and uh, sometimes moving from uh, outside in is uh, just what you need to do is Landon Nall checks into the ball game, replacing Daniel Green. Christian Weatherall sits down as well, and uh, that makes way uh, for uh, I'm not sure who checked back into the ball game. I missed somebody along the way. Yeah, Rouse part, is there. Wheeler is there. Part of that for Anderson is just recognizing that and, you know, being willing to drive a little bit instead of continue to shoot from three. Off the glass for Wheeler. It's good and a foul on the play. You get a chance for uh, one more. Could you make uh, make out who that was on the on the call? That was Rumpf. Picking up what I have is his second foul. And the 6'4 senior gets three the old-fashioned way. And he's right at his nine points per game, 66-52. Just under 12 to play in this one. Donnell Avery has checked back in for Coach Mario Farr. Here comes Chalka, cross-court pass to Avery. Avery in front of the Blue Lights bench, gets a pick from Rump. Turns around, drives inside, off the glass. Oh, it won't drop for him. I like the, uh, well, I like that look. Wow, good looking shot by Wheeler outside. 66-55, and uh, what we had 
has a, uh, what, a 20-point lead or a 19-point lead just a few minutes ago. Now down to 11, Rumpf. He hits on the baseline. Important there to get some type of response. Don't let you know University Prep here go on any type of run. Rouse left open, but short gets his own rebound. Working it inside, Shamari Hickson now over to Faison, who is free for the runner. Not there. Rebound. Rump. Here come the thoroughbreds. Bounce pass to Chalka, and bodies hit the floor. And I believe the foul is going to be on Wheeler, his second, but a timeout on the floor with 10.43 to play in this one, a 13-point advantage for the Thoroughbreds. You can hurt yourself anywhere, on the field, in the yard, or walking down the street. At Duke Orthopedics, we offer a range of treatments, from urgent care and sports medicine to physical therapy and advanced surgery. And now we've added more locations, more specialists, and extended our clinic hours so you can get seen quickly. We're giving you convenient access to orthopedic care when, where, and how you need it. Hey, what's up, Blue Lights College fans? My name is Sean Walder, and I'm the worship pastor here at Apex Baptist Church. And we just want to take a moment to say how honored we are to partner with Blue Lights College and have them on our campus practicing every single week. We're thankful for their involvement in the community and their commitment to serve as first responders. You guys are amazing, and we are so thankful for you allowing us to be a part of all that you do. Buying, selling, or relocating in the Triangle. Let Johnny and Danny Blackwell of the Blackwell Group Keller Williams Elite Realty be your first call. Johnny and Danny have access to some of the best technology to help guarantee your real estate success. From top-of-the-line websites to their own personal KW mobile apps, as well as social media realms, they'll work hard and smart to reach your goals. Find out more at theblackwellgroup.net. A 10-4 run by U-Prep has uh, given a little bit of life to the visitors here this evening. 68-55, still a lead for Blue Lights College. Outside, three on the way. It's short. Rebound by Nall. He's looking for help. Has it knocked away, and apparently a little bit more than just ball. As uh, that foul going to be on Donnell Avery. I have that as his first, but that will... Well, no, not in the not in the uh, not in the bonus yet. Nall works around Baker and a foul on the play. Nall's shot falls away short. He's frustrated with himself, but he should have two shots coming up on the foul. Coger gets set to check back in as Nall will be shooting two. 10-19 to play in this one. He's got 11 points unofficially. Williams getting set to check back into the ball game. Chalka, Anderson, Christian Baker sit down. Malcolm Mills also back in. So it'll be Mills, Coger, Williams, Avery and Jeremiah Baker for the herd. Second shot won't go. Coger has another rebound. Off to Avery. Quickly up floor. 10-15 to play. Bounce pass to Williams. Williams over Nall. Nice shot. He's smooth on those mid-range jumpers. 70 to 56. Some half-court pressure. Wheeler has his shot swatted into the hands of Jeremiah Baker. Here comes Avery spinning once, spinning twice, and has his pocket picked by Wheeler. U prep with the basketball. Back to Wheeler. Long three. Not there. Rebound. The long arm of the law. Eric Williams pulls it in to Avery. Avery looking with the scissor dribble. Now to Koger. Off the glass. Too hard. Tapped up once. Nall has it. And a whistle. Looks 
Coger will have shots coming up with 9.31 to play. Nall picking up foul number three. According to my highly unofficial statistics, shot short by Coger. Still 70 to 56. Then the thoroughbreds in control. It hasn't been uh, less than a, a double-digit lead here in the second half, and been as many as uh, 19. That one hard off the glass, not there. Avery has it. Quickly forward pass to Coger. Coger left open for two. Coger and Williams come back into the game and immediately an impact. Timeout on the floor on the double team on Wheeler. 8.58 to play, and this is probably going to be a 30, so we'll keep it right here, 72 to uh, 56. No, it is a, a full timeout. We'll step away as well on the Thoroughbred Sports Network. Hey, what's up, Blue Lights College fans? My name is Sean Walder, and I'm the worship pastor here at Apex Baptist Church. And we just want to take a moment to say how honored we are to partner with Blue Lights College and have them on our campus practicing every single week. We're thankful for their involvement in the community and their commitment to serve as first responders. You guys are amazing, and we are so thankful for you allowing us to be a part of all that you do. You could have Papa John's. Or you could leave your family at CC's Pizza Unlimited Buffet and start a new life in Omaha. The mission of Hope Community Church is to love people where they are and encourage them in their relationship with Jesus Christ. The Hope Community Church Apex Campus is the home of Blue Lights College basketball, and the Thoroughbreds are so grateful for Hope's partnership. Find out more at gethope.net. Under nine minutes to play in this one. Thoroughbreds with the rebound off the U-Prep miss. This is Avery looking to go inside, has his pass, path cut off. Outside the Jeremiah Baker, back to Avery. 72-56, blue lights leading University Prep. 15 to shoot, bounce pass to Coger. Outside, touch pass from Mills to Jeremiah Baker. Rims out. U Prep with the rebound out to Faison. Quickly down the floor, back outside, and they'll work it around the horn. Wheeler guarded by Mills to Reek Rouse. Wheeler again to Faison. Faison outside, squares up for three, in and out. But the follow is up and good off the glass by Shamar Hickson. Just his second field goal of the night. He has six points, 72-58, 8.05 remaining. Nalls back on the floor for U-Prep. Mills. Williams looking to get open, does so, can't get it to drop, fighting for his rebound, and lost last touch by Nall. So with seven seconds to shoot, actually that should have re, uh, that should reset uh, because that ball uh, did touch the rim. So the shot clock should have reset, but we have a timeout, our under eight media timeout, 72 to 58. Blue lights still in control back after this. Gear up for back to sport at Academy Sports and Outdoors. This is a filet of fish sandwich. This is Arby's crispy fish sandwich. And this is Arby's fish and cheddar sandwich. Ours are two for six. Theirs is oops, there it goes, who cares anyway. Arby's, we have the meat. At Two Dog Digital, computer and IT service is more than a catchphrase. It's the reason they do what they do. From threat management and hardware to web design and managed services, Two Dog Digital is your company's best friend in the IT business. That's the number two, dogdigital.com, to discover the Two Dog Digital difference. 
Difference in this one is 14 points at 72 to 58. 748 to play in this one. And a turnover as Coger lost his footing at the baseline, or rather the center line. Turnover to U Prep. Both teams just kind of trading baskets here in the last little bit. Nall looking to get away from Koger. Can't do it. Gets the ball away, however, into the corner with the floater. That's Faison. He's having a big game. He's got 18 points according to my – or was that Hickson? Excuse me. 72 to 60. Baker squares up. He wants three. Can't get it. Koger to Avery. Avery puts it up. Off the glass, not there. Nall has it for U Prep. Seven minutes to go in this one. Thoroughbred still holding on to a double digit lead. Rouse to Wheeler to Faison. Looking to go inside and broken up with 11 seconds to shoot. Last touched by the We Me gang. I like that. We is greater than me on the back. That's what I was going to point out earlier. I got disrupted by a, uh, by a three-pointer, I think, by Wheeler. Donnell Avery to Mills. Baker to Williams. And dragged his foot. Subs checking in for uh, Far Kenny Anderson and Daquan Holloway. Check into the ball game for Donnell Avery and Malcolm Mills. So it looks like uh, a full complement of starters on the floor right now for the Thoroughbreds. I believe we have the starters for U Prep back on the floor as well. And there it is for Nall. That Faison to Nall connection, that could be big here if they want to get back into it. Those two got to hook up. They've got it trimmed down to 10 now with 6.05 to play in this one. Threading the needle to Holloway. He drives the baseline, puts up the reverse, can't get it to drop. A little too much English on it. Here comes Faison and Uprep trying to get it down to single digits. Tariq Rouse guarded by Anderson. Nall looking inside. Working against Koger. Koger has it blocked. In fact, he ties him up, and the possession arrow will give the ball to BLC. Wow, what a turn of events there is. Nall thought he had held on to the possession, and a, a quick whistle turns it over. Yeah, that would have been two in a row right there for Nall, and that would have been big for their confidence, would have cut the lead to single digits. And a uh, push off, and I didn't catch who the call was on but turns the ball back over to University Prep. With 5.39 to go in this one and another opportunity to trim this lead down to single digits. Pressure in the half court, almost stolen by Jeremiah Baker. This is Faison with the runner knocked out of bounds by the herd. Coach Terry Roust, University Prep, coaching his guys up. Five and a half to play, and University Prep with Faison on the baseline. Gets it to Nall, who's wide open for two. There's that Faison to Nall connection. And we're down to eight, 72 to 64 now with 520 remaining. Holloway has his path cut off. Baker will take it up hard off the glass for two. Wheeler outside, three, not there. Baker has the rebound. Tiptoes through the tulips, finds his way all the way to the other end, off the glass, and fouled! <laughs> Jeremiah Baker fouled by Hickson. Coach Terry Rouse not happy with the, uh, with the foul. <laughs> Baker to add one and can't get it to drop. Touched out of bounds. Who touched it last? Yep, I believe they're going to say Eric Williams, and he doesn't fight the call. 
think that's 19 for Baker. He's right up around 20 for sure. He's played real well tonight on the offensive end. Yeah, he has really come on in the last month to take up some of that slack from Denzel Jacobson's injury, taking him out of the lineup for the rest of the season. And Mario Farr wanted somebody to do it, and Baker has certainly been one of the ones to do it. Eric Williams has too as well. Can't get that one to drop, and Coger fights for the rebound, but Rouse, or rather Hickson, is there for you, Prep. At the other end, making it look easy is Rouse. And it's back to 10 at 76-66. 4.21 to play. In this one, and a kicked ball by Faison. It'll be out of bounds to Blue Lights. Stops the clock long enough for Hickson to sit down and allow Daniel Green to check back in for Coach Terry Rouse's Panthers. Here comes Holloway. Gets the pick from Coger. Spins around, looking for help. Finds it in the person of Eric Williams, who's mugged underneath, and he'll have two shots coming up. That's Wheeler's third. Four ten to play our uh, next time out coming up shortly. With the lead at 10, Williams keeps it there for the moment. One more coming. I have Williams with 10 points on the night. I could have missed one or two through there. Gets that one. 77-66, 409. Important for him to get at least one there. You like to see two, but don't want to give University Prep any type of chance here, or any type of confidence uh, with it looming around that 10-point lead. Way outside, working it around. Wheeler in the corner to Green. Six to shoot. Looking for a good shot. That could be it. It's short. And rebound goes off the fingertips of Baker. And uh, that should be uh, about 20 seconds or so on the shot clock. And they're resetting it now to 19. Timeout on the floor. Our last media timeout in regulation with 3.39 to play. It's Blue Lights leading University Prep 77-66. to 66. The Mascot Media National Sports app is your home for your sports network. A free download in the App Store and Google Play, this app is the home base for your entire athletic program. Schedules, scores, rosters, news, social media, final score notifications, along with the ability to watch live broadcasts are just a touch away. Show your school support and allow your business to be featured throughout your school's mobile app. The Mascot Media National Sports app. Your home for your sports network. Ten to five run right now for University Prep over the uh, past four to five minutes. Wheeler gets the inbound with 20 to shoot and can't get it to drop. Rebound. Eric Williams once again skying for the carom. Here comes Baker. He's going to take it coast to coast. Lays it up. Left-handed off the glass for two. He's feeling it. 79 to 66. Certainly uh, the uh, Jeremiah Baker factor important here, but uh, then again, uh, so is that Rouse. Yep. 79-68, tapped out of bounds. Rouse once again doing it on the defensive end and may have hurt his finger a little bit on that tap with 3.04 to play, 23 to shoot when Jeremiah Baker inbounds in front of his own bench. Can't get it in, so puts it off the foot of Faison out of bounds. I'll try it again. Finds Holloway, and it's not there for Coger. With the with three minutes to go here, possession is more important than anything for Blue Lights College. I think they run a little time off the clock and let Jeremiah Baker kind of call the shots there. Um, but throwing that ball away, 
don't want that, don't want to give them any type of shot to get anything going and get back in this thing. Hickson checks in for Green, so we're back to the starters on the floor for Terry Rouse, and for that matter for Mario Farr's group as well. 79 to 68, 250 to play. Outside, Shamar Hickson can't get it to drop. Rebound to Koger. And what's the call here as uh, Rouse hits the floor? And Maybe was it Holloway? Holloway? For a push. Yep. I only have that as Daquan's second foul. And uh, we still have some to give before being in the bonus with 2.42 to play. Full court pressure. Well, at their university preps inbounding on their own end line, so of course. And here we go to Wheeler. Little push, no call against Anderson. Outside to Faison. He's going to drive, dishes off to Nall, who tries for the Ooh. slam and can't get the stuff. Here Williams comes Baker. Baker to Anderson. Anderson's going to bring it back outside and burn some clock to Baker. Baker at the elbow. Got it! Making it look automatic right now, Dan. Yeah, Baker can't miss. And at the, at the other end before that, that was Williams who got a hand up in there and stopped that dunk. 81-68, two minutes to go in this one. We're at the two-minute warning, Nall outside. That's not where they want him. He'll work around to the inside. The long reach off the glass, but a foul as Hickson will be going to the line to shoot two. So on the one hand, I think if Blue Lights, assuming they hold on to uh, to take this one home, they're going to be happy with the win. I'm not sure Mario Farr is going to be entirely happy with the way they went about doing it. Falls off for Hickson. He has one more coming with a minute 55 to go in this one. Good on that one for Hickson and a timeout on the floor with a minute 55 to play, 81-69. It's a 12-point advantage, a 30-second timeout. We will keep it right here. A reminder, the next game for the Thoroughbreds, uh, they hit the road this Saturday heading to Virginia Beach, Virginia to take on the Bobcats of Bryant and Stratton. Our next broadcast game uh, will be uh, coming up uh, two weeks from tonight. I think we actually have next Tuesday off, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, we're all sort of nodding. Yeah, yeah. Two weeks from tonight, I believe it's those uh, Bobcats come back uh, for a return trip from Virginia Beach. We'll be bringing you that action starting uh, next uh, uh, two weeks from tonight. Airtime about 545 right here on YouTube. Blue Lights Thoroughbreds channel. Hope you'll join us for that. Uh, Bryant and Stratton uh, usually look for a pretty high-powered offense out of the Bobcats, and I'm sure this year is no different. Minute 55 to go, 81-69. Blue lights with the lead and the basketball into Baker. Here comes Jeremiah. Anderson and back. Man-to-man -man defense by U Prep Drive. And got a piece of the ball, but a piece of Jeremiah Baker as well. So two shots uh, coming up, and I believe it's going to be on Nall. That'll be his fourth. I'm not sure what Mario Farr said in that timeout, but I got to imagine that he's giving that ball to Jeremiah Baker there, and he's letting him run the game from here on out. This may be the fifth foul on uh, Landon Nall. We may have missed one along the way, and I believe that's what has just been indicated. So Nall will sit down. Daniel Green will check in for U Prep. So a big loss in uh, 
more ways than one for Coach Terry Rouse with 143 remaining. Shot is up, shot is good by the Apex freshman, Jeremiah Baker. Null follows, follows out there, and he's definitely an impact player. He's a presence on the court, but I don't think he was able to get into the groove tonight that he wanted to get into. Um, there, was a, there was a period there where him and Faison kind of connected, but I think if they were able to do that a little more throughout the game, we'd be looking at something a little closer right now. Hickson for two. Lead back to nine, quickly underneath. It's up and good by Holloway, taking the pass underneath. He's got five points on the evening, 84-71. Williams going for the steal with 70 seconds to play. There's the runner up and good off the glass by Hickson. On that Holloway basket. Oh, Jeremiah off the Baker. fingertips. Baker found him and... He's just doing it all tonight. 62 seconds to go in this one at a turnover, not what they were hoping for there off the bullet pass. Williams couldn't handle it just outside of his reach. Here comes University Prep. They've been much more. There's a turnover to Baker who can't finish it. Oh, that is not what Farr wanted, although he doesn't seem to be too unhappy about it. Outside for three, though, by Rouse. And that pulls it down to an eight-point deficit for University Prep. And full court pressure being shown. And wait a minute, let's see, is uh, what's Mario Farr wanting to do here? Terry Rouse encouraging his defense. <laughs> Wanting Daniel Green to uh, step it up just a little bit now, and he uh, trades positions with Rouse, and here we go. Anderson into Baker. Baker quickly into the forecourt. Now to Williams. Williams fouled on the play. He, too, going for him. We've had two missed dunks in a row here as – the Thoroughbreds may be feeling just a little bit too confident too early here with 40.9 seconds to go. Williams with two shots coming up. Does not connect on the first. One more. Second one's better. 84-77. Lead is at seven, now at five. As I said, maybe just a little bit too confident too soon here. Anderson. Pass deflected, and there's a foul stopping the clock with 23.8 seconds to go. And I was just about to say, I don't think Blue Lights has played well enough to get, to get cocky at this point. Uh, they, they've sort of kept... You prep at bay, but uh, if they uh, they sort of step out of their game plan here late, I'm not sure that that's going to uh, bode well for them. Yeah, you can't fault Baker there for going for the dunk uh, on his night, but that that could turn out to be a critical basket here as University Prep is, finds himself only down six with 23 seconds to go. All right, they'll have the basketball, 85 to 78. This is a 30-second timeout. We will keep that one right here. Whether an experienced cheerleader or looking to get your child started in tumbling, Infinite Cheer in Apex has the winning experience, safe environment, and top-notch facilities your young person needs and deserves. Infinite Cheer is a veteran-owned business, and their elite gym is the home of Thoroughbreds Wrestling. See all they have to offer at theinfinitecheer.com. And, Dan, it's time for us to uh, start thinking about our player of the game, uh, as always brought to us by Academy Sports and Outdoors. And I think I know who you have in mind. Yeah, I mean, Williams and Coger both did a great job tonight, and a couple guys stepped up, uh, like Christian Baker did a good job working on Null down low, but... No doubt about it, Jeremiah Baker is my player of the game tonight. 
I've got him with 24 points at this point, and a travel by Rouse turns the ball over. That is inopportune. But uh, perhaps of more importance right now, Daquan Holloway hobbling just a little bit, and he's going to have to sit down as assistant coach Joel Myers goes out to take a look at him to make sure that the academic All-American is okay. And it looks like it's something he's going to be able to walk off. Hopefully that is uh, the case. So he's going to head to the bench. Mason Rumpf will check in with 18.6 remaining. A seven-point advantage for the Thoroughbreds. They will have the ball and Rumpf to inbound. Looking for help, finds it in the person of Eric Williams, uh, excuse me, Kenny Anderson, who is uh, fouled. That is not who you prep wanted to foul. He is uh, has a... Uh, Probably the best, and I don't have it here in front of me, but probably the uh, best free throw shooting percentage on the team, he or Jeremiah Baker at this point. Only two seconds ticked off the clock. So that uh, served you prep well. His third from the line tonight, that stretches the lead back out to eight. This one's short, and here comes University Prep with 14 seconds. Taking it coast to coast, off the glass, up and good for Hickson. He's had a big, big second half, and is that a foul on the play? Yep. So immediately stopping the clock with ones across, 11.1 seconds to go in this one. Two shots coming up for Jeremiah Baker. There's also... Pretty handy fellow to have at the charity stripe as he has, uh, and I jinxed him. Actually, he's only hit one there this evening. 86-80. Makes that one. And that's big, makes it a three-possession ball game. Way outside, this one short. Rebound rump, five seconds to play, and the immediate foul will send the Lexington, South Carolina freshman to the line to shoot two as we are in the double bonus. Shot clock is off with only five ticks left and uh, just about anything at this point is gravy. Well, it looks solid in picking up his seventh point of the night. And hits that one as well. But I'll have to agree with you, Dan. The Academy Sports and Outdoors player of the game certainly tonight has to be Jeremiah Baker, who I have with 24 points on the night. He averages 14, uh, averages 19 and a half a ball game. He had 14 in the contest back on January the 26th in the win. So uh, with the win here this evening, Blue Lights goes to 5-5 five and five on the season. University Prep drops to 8-10. and 10. And uh, that is just about going to wrap it up uh, from the arena here in Apex. Dan, any final thoughts for you this evening? I think that 80 on the scoreboard for University Prep may be a little misleading. I think they let them back in towards the end. I was I thought that the... Blue Light's defense was pretty scrappy tonight, and that was evident through, I want to say, three or four violations and what won't go down, a lot of rush shots toward the end of a, toward the end of a shot clock there. Um, but, yeah, and then you just got to go back to Jeremiah Baker again, who really took charge down the line there. And without him at the end there, maybe, maybe University Prep crawls back in. Absolutely right. Again, the final here this evening, a nine-point win for the Thoroughbreds as they improve to 5-5 five and five on the season. Uh, my thanks this evening to cameraman Sean Cooper. Our technical director is Roderick Warren. Also thanks to Mario Farr and his staff for all of their help here this evening. Final score, Blue Lights College 89, University Prep 80. For my partner, Dan Fury, we will see you two weeks from tonight when Bryant and Stratton come to town. Until then, I'm Mike Davis. So long, everybody.